Okay, so here I am at the Angelino Hotel, and I'm out back in the smoking area. And uh, anyway, I've been wanting to do this for a long time because, uh, I mean, every cigar shop, not every cigar shop, but a lot of cigar shops have their own custom rolls that you can buy, which uh, is a lot more inexpensive than purchasing some of the regular brand cigars. So um, there's a few out, quite a few places out there that sell custom rolls. There's a few places that I like their custom rolls. Uh, one of them being the um, the Clayton, the Clayton, which is in uh, Chicago. So a guy uh, who's one of the owners there gave me a tour of that place. Oh my gosh, great place. But their custom rolls are actually are pretty gosh darn good cigar. Uh, another place uh, here in Orange County that I go to quite a bit is High Time Cellars and their Smoke Shack. They, uh, they do a custom roll there too. They have four different flavors of custom roll. Now this is the Robusto. They have a Toro and there's one other one. I'm sorry uh, if I don't, sorry Sean, but you got the Robusto, the Toro, and then one other one. And then there's four different um, wrappers on the cigar as well. And uh, whatchamacallit, the, it's, what is it? Tabacaleras Leyendas which does the Recluse Cigars uh, online. You can look up Recluse Cigars. So this is basically Dominican Leaf with uh, various uh, wrappers on there, maybe binders too, I'm not sure. I just got the scoop that I know at least the, the wrappers are different. I'm sure there's probably something with the binder as well, but never know. But it's a Dominican Leaf and there's four flavors of it. So uh, you have the Connecticut, which is right here. You have the Brazilian, right here. You have the San and Mexican San Andreas here, and then of course the Habana right here. So uh, I've smoked many of these cigars in, oh, the retail price on the Robusto I think is $3.99 for the Robusto. And then the Toro is like, uh, I think $4.99. I think it's a dollar more for the Toro. So. As far as California prices go, I mean, that's pretty good because basically, you know, getting a, a quality cigar uh, for a pretty cheap price is not easy to do. So um, it's really nice that Sean was able to uh, contact, I don't know exactly how the story goes exactly, but I do know that Sean Patrick, who is the main guy over there at the Smoke Shack, he's the manager, um, just, head honcho over there at the smoke shack he went and um actually you know worked on the blends and everything like that with the recluse cigar company so that he came up with stuff that he thought was good and that's what they're selling at the smoke shack and i think they did a really good job on these cigars uh, like i said i've smoked all four different flavors of this cigar if you, so to speak uh, the one that i appreciate the most is the Habano right here. And this is the one that I'm gonna smoke uh, today. Give some tasting notes on is the Habano. But uh, like I said, the, you know, pretty good stuff, I think, as far as it goes for uh, custom rolls. And that's the thing too is, um, you know, you should kind of dip your toe in if you, you know, if you're smoking stuff and um, so on and so forth you should actually try the people's custom roll stuff because sometimes you get some of these things that are just like insanely good for an insanely cheap price and uh and that's why i always like look try and look in the bargain bins like over at cigar warehouse i'll go in the bargain bin over there i don't know if they uh, they probably don't appreciate me that much promoting their bargain bin but uh i think it's great i think all cigar shops would do that if something doesn't sell blow it out get the capital to um, get new stuff. And then you'll be giving people a deal and maybe actually people trying that cigar in your bargain bin will start buying stuff from that brand that's not on sale because they like the stuff in the bargain bin and they'll start buying other stuff. Cause that's what I'll do is I, I'll, I'll pick up stuff in a bargain bin 
and I will smoke it. And it's like, oh my gosh, that's, you know what? Let, well, let's try some of this other stuff. I know it's not on sale in the bargain bin, but who knows? It might be pretty good. So to me, it's just like insane that um, a cigar shop wouldn't do that. I mean, it's so, it's so crazy how cigar shops will hang on to stuff. They'll have stuff on their shelves that they've had up there for, you know, like 10 years. Literally, I have seen that and with the same price on there or whatever, and they won't blow it out because they want to make a profit on it. Whereas if they would have blown it out and just gotten their money back or a little bit over their money back on that cigar, they would have had the capital buy other stuff to possibly hit a home run on something else and make an even bigger profit. I mean, it just makes sense to me, but who am I? I'm just some knucklehead on the internet with an opinion. And, I, you know, and I'm sure there's people out there going, well, if you run a cigar, when, once you run a cigar shop, then you could do that, right? Well, yeah, that's true. But I mean, I've seen it, I see it working over at Cigar Warehouse over in the valley here, and that's what they do. Now, Sean's shop over there, you can't smoke in there. And they do quite a bit of volume over there as well. And their prices are already really low, so they, they end up getting rid of stuff. They have a constant turnover of stuff over there because their prices are low. The family that owns uh, High Times, they own the property, they own the building, so they have a lot of different, you know, a lot less constraints on them, so to speak, as opposed to like other cigar lounges and cigar shops around in the Southern California area where they have to actually rent the space. And, you know, you rent the space, you're paying rent, so you have to get that rent in along with all the other expenses over the month. So, I mean, it's a different thing. So, anyway, my hat's off to, Saeed, I don't know, he's a very stoic kind of a guy, and uh, I never can get a read on him, but I mean, I, I just appreciate the fact that he, uh, he does that over there at Cigar Warehouse. And I appreciate the fact that Sean has put together these four blends at High Times, uh, Cellars, uh, and Smoke Shack, and uh, I don't know. I, for me, these cigars work, and at four bucks a stick, you can't go wrong for a Robusto, four bucks a stick. I guess what I should do is uh, I should do a close-up on this thing the proper way, like I do on the ch on the other channel. But I mean, just looking at this cigar right here, it's just uh, it's very smooth. You, you, it has a bit of a veininess in there. It's got like a, a kind of a paper sack kind of a wrapper on there. Um, but all in all, and I really dig the the pigtail, the way that they do that at the top, that's awesome. These cigars also never came with a, um, with a band, but they started uh, putting a band on there with their name, Iconic Leaf Cigar Company. And uh, so that, that's a new one. But sometimes you get, I don't know if you can, you probably can't see the glue that's right there on the, from them putting the band on there, but uh, that can be a bit of a bummer. So let's pull this thing off, give it a cut and a light. Oh, where's my... Yeah, we've been getting a lot of rain here in Southern California. And uh, finally had a good day today. It's nice and clear. Now you can pull this, uh, pull this off, but I'm just gonna cut it. Draw's not like super wide open, which is good. It's got a nice little tug on there. Anyway. So right out the gate, it's uh, it, what I really like about these cigars too is a lot of times a New World cigar will really blast you with that pepper in the nose, and uh, you know these these are kind of nice. They just got a little bit of that a little bit of that pepper that goes through the nose, and it's got a bit of a citrusy finish on the on the palate here.
and that it's got that uh, a little bit of citrus, a little bit of that spice on the palate too, on the finish. But starting out, I really appreciate the fact that it just doesn't blast your your nose off and uh, you know make for an unpleasant experience in the beginning because I you know I retro the cigar so it's awful nice here. But anyway, I'm gonna smoke this thing down to my knuckle and I'll be back with the tasting notes. Back with the tasting notes on the High Times Habano custom roll. So like I said, it opened up with that citrusness, citrusiness on the palate, along with that a bit of that pepper. And as the cigar developed in the first third, uh, that pepper was more became more of a baking spice with baking notes in there, which is quite nice. As the cigar burned down through the first third and the second third, there was you still had that baking spice in there, a uh, hint of a gram, kind of a gram cracker. Uh, note in the retro, and uh, that citri that citrus citrusiness on the palate um, was very long, had a very nice long finish to it. The cigar toward the end of the second third uh, started getting some woody notes in there, a little bit of leather. Uh, the cigar was actually got a little bit bitter uh, as it burned down through the second third and the last third. The cigar has become a little bit bitter. But it still maintained that really nice, uh, that kind of a baking spice. Although that woodiness has also come up in the retro as well with that baking spice. And um, the finish on the palate still has that citrus along with a bit of tobacco and a hint of leather. But all in all, a pretty decent cigar for a custom roll. I mean, uh, the body on the cigar, almost medium plus to full, I would say, because that finish was rather long. Uh, just kind of coated the whole palate. Uh, it was a little bit oily too as well. Definitely uh, let you know that you had been smoking a cigar. Uh, strength wise, not a medium to medium plus strength on this cigar. But all in all to me, it's for a four dollar stick, <clears throat> quite a nice cigar to smoke. Definitely if you have a chance to go down to high time sellers and pick some of these up, hopefully you will and we can compare notes in the future. Um, I know Paul's not here, but uh, I think uh, after the first of the year, we're going to be shooting some videos and Paul's going to get back into the mix here on the Smoking Gorilla Lounge, which would be quite nice. I like having a partner with me where I can talk to while we're shooting. It's, uh, it's actually quite nice to be able to do that. But uh, I wanted to get this out here because I really appreciate Sean and all the things that he's doing down there at High Times. And um, yeah, just wanted to give a shout out to Sean and really to talk to people about the custom rolls because you can get some really good value on a custom roll. And you might see where there's manufacturers that you might enjoy smoking their premium stuff or their stuff for the higher price. And you might get it for a, a lesser price and you might enjoy that and that might become your everyday smoke. So just wanted to get that word out there as well. And they, they've got a lot of stuff at high times. So they've got everything there that you could possibly want to find in any cigar shop at all. And uh, if you get down there and you watch this video, tell Sean that Dave the Dude, um, you saw him on the video and uh, you wanted to check out some of those custom rolls. I know he would greatly appreciate that. So anyway, I think I've rambled on quite enough here and uh, the next video hopefully we'll have Paul over on my left or my, he's usually on the left over here where Paul's at and we can shoot some more videos with Paul anyway ramble on enough that's enough out of me